with is a hybrid, and its parental species are indigenous to southeastern Brazil. Uh, the species are Slumbergera truncata and Slumbergera vaseliana. Uh, Slumbergera truncata is found between 700 meters and 1,000 meters, whereas uh, Slumbergera vaseliana is found between 1,300 and 2,100 meters. Uh, we conducted two experiments on our plant, um, and the first that we looked at was humidity and temperature effects on uh, the speed at which pollen tubes grow down the style. The second involved pollen viability in vitro. Um, the first research that we conducted involved humidity and temperature, and we looked at this because the two parental species originate in two different uh, elevations, and so they uh, experience two different environments and with that two different temperatures. So we want to know if our variety of Christmas cactus preferred the cold or the warmer temperatures. The way we went about conducting our experiment, uh, we removed the anthers from the flowers and self -hand, and hand pollinated the flowers um, and let them sit between 16 to 24 hours uh, in the greenhouse or the environmental chamber. And we did several hand pollinations, and so with every session we tried uh, to get at least every plant in the opposite uh, environment. So if it started out in the environmental chamber, we then put it in the greenhouse. Um, from there, we collected the flowers, put them in FAA to preserve them, uh, did a several rinses, and then put them in sodium hydroxide in order to soften the tissues. Uh, from, then, from that, we uh, added aniline blue to them uh, in order to dye them. We then uh, dissected the flowers um, in order to obtain the pistils, which we then uh, mounted and compressed on a cover slide in order to view uh, through fluorescence microscopy. Um, as you can see here, we have, the we have two photos of wh what we were looking for, um, and we noted a, a few things. We noted whether there were any pollen grains on the stigma surface. We noted if there was any pollen tube growth, which you can see here. Uh, the, light, the light blue clusters and strains being the pollen tubes that have grown. Um, and then we also counted the length of the longest pollen tube using fields of view, and we used the same method of measurement to uh, count the length of the style. So as you can see here, we have um, the ending of the longest pollen tube growth that we found in that particular plant. Um, from there, we calculated the percent pollen tube uh, growth and we did that by taking the measurement of the longest pollen tube for the particular flower that we used and then uh, divided it by the entire length of the style. We did that for all the flowers used and uh, we put that in a t-test and as you can see there in the blue and green graph, um, our hypothesis was actually tr uh, proven uh, and we see here that the greenhouse was favored over the environmental chamber and that's what we were expecting. Um, in addition to looking at humidity and temperature effects on the speed of pollen tube growth, we also looked at pollen viability and so um, we looked to see if the time, we looked to see how time affected pollen grain uh, pollen grains after a flower has undergone anthesis and so instead of only looking at first day flowers like we did in the first experiment. We looked at first, second, and third day flowers. Uh, before we could dive into our experiment completely, we had to first mimic the environment that the pollen tubes preferred to grow in. And so we used a protocol that called for a one-to-one -one volume ratio of boric acid and calcium nitrate. Um, from there, we made eight different sucrose solutions ranging from 0 to 30%, and we, what we found was that the 20% sucrose solution and the 30% uh, were the most informative, mainly because the 20% showed that there was pollen tube growth, but there was very little, and in the 30%, we definitely had pollen tube growth, and, uh, but most of the pollen tubes burst as well as, well as the pollen grains. Um, so we decided to make a 25% sucrose solution and that actually proved to be the best of all of the prepared sucrose solutions um, that we had done previously. So from there, um, as you can see in this picture here, we have a petri dish that we labeled with at least uh, a grid that had either six or seven boxes, which we then added 10 microliter droplets to. Um, and then corresponding with the pollen added to the droplets above the box, we would put either, uh, for example, if the pollen was from uh, plant 107 and a first day flower.
Um, from there, we added two milliliters of the sucrose solution to the base, laced the outer rim with petroleum jelly, and sealed it shut uh, to keep in the humidity. And we let them sit like that for about 24 hours before collecting them to analyze the data that we had. Um, what we found bef before we uh, looked at them under the microscope, we stained them with aniline blue and then loaded them onto a hemocytometer. And you can see here in these photos some of what we saw when we looked under the microscope. Um, we looked for floating, intact, and burst pollen tubes, as well as floating and intact pollen grains. Uh, the first photo is a very good depiction of what the pollen tubes look like that we were looking for. And in the bottom, you can definitely see a few burst pollen grains and one burst pollen tube. Um, from there, we calculated the uh, percent viability of the pollen, and the way that we went about doing that is we took the numbers of uh, intact bursts and floating pollen tubes and added that together in the numerator. And in the denominator, we had the overall um, number of pollen grains minus the number of burst pollen grains. Uh, we did this because we're not entirely sure why some of the pollen grains burst, so we just subtracted them out. Um, and we did this for each uh, time lapse, so for the first day flowers, second day, and third day flowers. Um, and with that information, we plugged it into an ANOVA test, and we were able to um, see that we found a trend but it was not significant enough to call significant. Um, and so we're hoping with furthering uh, this research and doing more experimentation that we'll be able to say that the trend is actually significant. Thank you.